international courts have a difficult task in prosecuting individuals for collective crimes. Is it possible on the national level to apply the same law or can Dutch judges rely on ordinary Dutch criminal law? Professor Elise van Sliedrecht wants to harmonize the tension between national and international criminal law. My main motive and inspiration for this field is um, it's twofold, I think. First of all, of course, there's this moral um, appeal in many ways. I mean, we're talking here about gross human rights violations uh, on the one hand, but also about defendants who have a right to a fair trial. And there's a tension there. And that fascinates me and that has attracted me to this field from the very beginning. The other side that I find fascinating is the, the legal culture side. I mean, law in many ways is culture and they come together in the field of international criminal law. And in that sense, that goes back, I think, to an interest that I had when I was in law school that just to stick to the Dutch law did not seem very interesting. It's always much more interesting to look outside your boundaries, beyond your boundaries, into other legal systems, into international law. And that's another aspect of international law that attracts me. At the moment, international courts are closing down. And there's one court left, and that's the International Criminal Court. But the ICC is complementary to national states. So only when these states don't prosecute crimes or don't try war criminals, then the ICC steps in. My research focuses on um, trying to bring together two bodies of international criminal law into one, one language, to use the analogy of language. Because what I try to do is try to improve communication between different international criminal courts, different legal cultures, uh, national and international, to uh, make them talk together. So I'm trying to come up with, with a grammar that connects them, a universal grammar, if you like. And that's basically what I, what I mean when I talk about harmonizing international criminal law and looking into um, harmonization. If you talk about applying norms, legal concepts from the international plane into the national court. I think the Frans van Anderlaat case is a very good example. Uh, this case was um, tried by a Dutch court and at some point they had to decide whether they should apply national law or international law with regard to an accomplice like Frans van Anderlaat to genocide. He was a businessman uh, supplying chemicals to the regime of Saddam Hussein. So with regard to complicity, does the accomplice need to share the genocidal intent, if we're talking about genocide, of the person who actually commits the crimes? Or is it sufficient that he has knowledge of that intent? Or is it even lower that he is aware of that intent and um, he doesn't really desire that genocide to happen, but he's mainly interested in doing business, commercial interests. And there are differences in international law and also in national law with regard to this concept of complicity. And the question that came up in the case was, which norm should you apply with regard to the knowledge of Frans van Anderaat? And these are questions that are very yeah, important because that can be the distinction between guilt or innocence. And um, that's why I think it's a very practical, it's a very practical and useful tool that I'm offering uh, with this research. The question whether there should be a separate type of liability theory for these crimes, I argue that we should stick to the national law. So complicity liability also as we use it for other crimes, for national crimes, because otherwise we have two types of law at the national level, which I think is undesirable. I see no reason to have stricter standards with regard to these international crimes. But there are indeed scholars who say that these crimes are crimes of obedience. International crimes differ from ordinary crimes and therefore they should also develop their own liability theory. There should be something that is different from liability theories within a domestic context. Crimes of obedience are crimes committed in a context where you are actually obeying the normative fr framework. You are doing what is expected from you. So if we go back to Nazi Germany, um, what Eichmann did 
um, what other SS officers did, they were within the context of that state. They weren't crimes and therefore they were just obeying orders, they were just doing what they were told. And only afterwards, after the war, of course, and it turned out what they had done, these were regarded to be crimes. I aspire and I hope that I can come up with, say, a document that is there with norms uh, explaining to national judges this is what command responsibility means, this is what complicity liability means with regard to international crimes. I think it's like a dictionary which has norms in it that explains to national lawyers in their own language what these liability theories entail and how they should interpret them. So it's, it's basically developing a tool with which they can try these crimes and um, set an example to the world how they should do it because I think um, there is a moral obligation for Dutch judges to do this right and so far they have actually done a good job but I think there is room for improvement.